Hello, good morning to you and many thanks for joining us. You're watching Galaxy Today, the first edition for this week. Uh, my name is Justin Akadanya. We trust you had yourself a rested weekend. Exactly, I did have a rested weekend of Uche Onyek Uche and it's good to have you right here on Galaxy Television. Okay, so today's topic is legality of Saraki Senate presidency and that's what we're looking at today, right Justin? Yes, we'll be looking at that a follow-up of all the you know development of the National Assembly with the siege that was laid on Tuesday with a call uh, for his impeachment you know, by the chairman of the All Progressives Congress, uh, that's um, uh, the former governor of Edo State, Adams Oshimali. He addressed a press briefing on Friday uh, declaring uh, in, the, in the meeting that uh, the Senate President uh, Bukola Saraki is on feet to you know, stay as um, the president of the Senate. We'll be looking at all of those matters, uh, plus um, talks of um, the, the uh, National Assembly reconvening this week. Uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, there's two speculations are concerning the exact time um, day of their resumption. So with all of this, all of this matters arising, what uh, you know, should we be expecting at the National Assembly, specifically at the House of Representatives and of course um, the Senate, you know, all of those matters. Uh, with a lot of the factions um, here and there, you know, is it going to be uh, business as usual? Plus, with the, uh, the request by the presidency for the you know, passage of um, the budget of um, INEC for the 2019 general elections, which is uh, on the front burner right now. So we'll be looking at all of those matters on the show this morning. And of course, uh, you can be a part of it uh, at some time. Uh, you can send an SMS if you want to you know, be part of the show. If you have yeah. a question, if you want to also um, ask, um, you know, just to do so and um, interact with us on our social media platforms. Remember, you can use the hashtag uh, Galaxy today. We'll be joining our guest in Ibadan, Abuja, and of course here in Lagos. But before we do that, we'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Being objective and impartial is our priority as we bring you the latest news on the front burner and then we get you to talk about it too. Please join us as top editors analyze stories that made headlines during the week. Every Saturday between 1 to 2 p.m. on Negators Forum on Galaxy Television. Do join us then. Galaxy Television invites handsome and beautiful actors and actresses who are within 18 to 38 years of age and fluent in Yoruba and English languages to participate in the auditioning for a new soap opera taking place at Platinum Apartments in Suites, 5B Michael Ogun Street, GRA Ikeja, Lagos, on Friday, 17 August 2018, between 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Each participant should come to the venue with two hard copies of their 5 by 7 photographs. One should be full posture while the other should be a portrait with their full names, age and phone numbers boldly written at the back of their photographs. For further inquiries, please call the following numbers 0802 430 6886 0807 477 4179 this is a golden opportunity to let your training and talent take you to the next level. Be there! Yes, it's finally here. Galaxy Digital Communication Network, the latest digital outside broadcast company in Nigeria. With its modern state-of-the-art vehicle, equipped with a four-place low-motion instant replay system and a software-based H-Impute Vision mixing system, transmits live events like sports, political campaigns, concerts from Abuja to Lagos, 
Kaduna, Port Harcourt, and all parts of Nigeria. Transmit these live via satellite to the entire world. Equipped with eight digital cameras and highly skilled engineers, Galaxy Digital Communication Network will guarantee your best affordable. Right, welcome back. If you've just joined us, you're watching Galaxy today, coming to you from Galaxy Television. We'll be starting uh, this discussion from Oyo State. We have a legal practitioner joining us this morning, uh, Dele. Oh, sorry, Remy Ali. Many thanks for joining us on Galaxy today. First of all, I just want to get um, your reaction specifically with all of this um, development, the drama, the siege, you know, and the press conference uh, by the, uh, convened by the leadership of the National Assembly. And again on Friday, in another press briefing by the chairman of the APC, all, you know, as a fallout of this defection. In your opinion, do you think the Senate president is still um, legally, you know, uh, you know, fit to be, you know, the president? That's, that's uh, sorry, uh, uh, Bukola Saraki. Senator Bukola Sharaki continuing as the president of the Senate should not be, be clouded by the political imbroglio involving his defection, as it were, from the APC to the PDP. It has been argued by several persons that Senator Sharaki should resign his position. But of course, that is not in accordance with the law. Those who have argued that he should resign are basing the argument on very general provisions of uh, the constitutions that state that the quorum for the sitting of the Senate should be one third of the membership of the Senate. They go further to say that the provision requiring that two thirds can remove the Senate president should be interpreted to mean two-thirds of one-third of the membership of the Senate. That, of course, flies against reason. It also flies against the law. The courts have held in several instances that where there are general provisions and there are special provisions, the special provisions will override those general provisions. This has been what the courts have held in several cases. One can start from Minokuju and Adelike, which involved the removal of uh, Governor Ladoja in New York State here. It is not the law that one third of the sitting of, of the membership of the Senate is what is required for removing the Senate president. What is required is two third of the members in the Senate. And two third of the members will mean two third of 109, which would be in the region of, uh, is it 60 something or 70 something? So the, what, the siege that happened is a lesson to us that perhaps our political actors need to rein in, the, shit their swords. Otherwise, the way they are going, they are eating up the polity. And it is not in the interest of all concerned. It is not the law that Senator Bukola Shari can be removed. Bringing in morals into it, morality as it was, some have argued that it is immoral for Senator Sharaki to continue to hold on to that position because he has defected from one party to the other. <laughs> That's a very strange argument to me. It is, it, is, uh, it is strange because I'm hearing argument about morality for the first time from Nigerian politicians. <laughs> the law is that it still remains the president of the Senate, and can only be removed at a sitting of the Senate where two-thirds of members vote against, vote for its removal. That is my position, sir. All right, uh, we'll, uh, we'll go get back to Ibadan in the course of the show. We'll take uh, a quick break and let us uh, give you a uh, you know, briefing uh, that happened on Friday you know, in Abuja with the, the chairman of the All Progressives Congress, Adams Oshomale, you know, talking about how unfit uh, Senate President Bukola Saraki is for that particular position. We'll come back and talk more with um, Ibadan. Stay with us.
They have 48 or so senators. We have 53 senators. So how can 48 senators preside over 53 senators? He's returning, he's returning us back to the PDP era where the PDP heard that 16 governors were more than 19 governors. That is the era Saraki is taking us to. And incidentally, he belongs to that club, and to that club he has returned. So we can see directly where he is going. We can see directly where he's going that he simply can't change his color. Not at old age. So let me conclude by saying that when I say the senior president will be impeached, he will be impeached properly according to law. And the Constitution is clear how a presiding officer can be impeached. And because several impeachment has taken place, both of former senior presidents and former speakers, we are not about to witness what has never happened before. And so we have enough precedent to fall back on. I have looked at the Nigeria Constitution. It doesn't say that an impeachment, once muted, is by itself illegal. Until it is done, and you looked at how it is done, you can't arrive at the conclusion whether the process was lawful or unlawful. Only a hardy criminal will allege that uh, one is an armed robber, even without seeing him with a stolen good or anybody complaining that his house has been boggled by the person. So how can we be accused of planning an illegal recruit, I mean, an illegal uh, impeachment when the impeachment has not commenced? But if he think that by saying that he's going to preempt the all progressive Congress from having him impeach, he is deceiving himself. I think Salaki's time is over. Got more. All right, welcome back. It's Galaxy Today, and of course, we are looking at the legality of Saraki's um, Senate presidency. And of course, we, we are being hooked with um, a guest in Ibadan. But before then, I'd just like to talk to my colleague here. Okay, Justin, saying mm. that um, what um, Oshomoli has said, a whole lot of people feel that, mm. aside of the fact that he's saying that um, all of a sudden Saraki is immoral and he can't handle, he's not, mm. he said he should be extinct. A whole lot of Nigerians believe also that is a political thing. I mean, this is something that happened in 2015. People yes. defecting and it's happening. In your own opinion, do you not think that we're actually being stagnant? Well, the thing is that um, this um, actually has brought um, the Nigerian um, democracy and, of course, um, the National Assembly into in the glare of um, you know, the international community. And, of course, a lot of people are just saying that in as much as our democracy is nascent, uh, we should you know, learn from history and be able to move our country forward. The, the, the APC chairman was, um, you know, you know basing, uh, he based this um, argument um, on um, the former Senate minority leader, mm -hmm. Gasu Lakpapio, who defected from the PDP, that's the People's Democratic Party, to the yeah. All Progressives Congress, the APC, and, and he resigned his, um, you know, um, his appointment or his um, position mm -hmm. as um, Senate minority leader. He's saying that um, the Senate president ought to do the same thing since he has left um, the All Progressives Congress, you know, to the People's Democratic um, Party, okay. PDP. I may just butt in there, Justin. Okay. Let's go straight to Ibadan and yeah, let's sure. hear what uh, the legal practitioner, Remy Ali, has to say. It's good to have you back on the show, um, Barrister Remy. All right, before we went to the break, we we're actually discussing what uh, went down during the press conference on Friday. But uh, in your own opinion, seeing that this happened in 2015, a whole lot of people defected from um, PDP to APC, and that is what is exactly happening now. Okay, now, what I want to ask is, the Senate is an APC majority and um, the executive in the majority, but with the president and the deputy president, I mean with the um, oh, Senate yes. president and the deputy oh, yes. um, Senate president moving to the PDP, what does all of this entail for 2019 and the legislature, in your own opinion? If I get you correctly, you're asking the propriety, as it were, of the leadership of the Senate belonging to a different party other than the majority party. Now, 
the law, the law is that members of the Senate elect their leader. It is not specifically provided for that the party controlling the majority seat in the Senate will provide the Senate president. It is only the House rules that provide for majority leader and minority leader coming from, respectively, those having either the lesser number of parties and the greater number of seats in the assembly. So Senator Bukola Sharaki, belonging to the PDP, does not necessarily invalidate his being president of the Senate. He is elected by members of the Senate. That we should take home as the truth. Of course, it is conventional that it is the party that controls the, major, the majority number of seats that will provide the Senate president. But it is not sacrosanct to the extent that the Constitution says members of the Senate shall elect their leader. May I quickly draw your attention to a situation that happened in New York State some time ago? When the position of the minority leader was to be made, it was, it, it, it was a party that was not the one amongst the minorities that had the largest number of seats. So the minority party leader, the minority leader in the, in, in the assembly, need not be the one that has the second largest number of seats in the House. Therefore, it is the law. Um, my humble opinion that Sharaki may still continue to function as the Senate president insofar as the members of the Senate says it can continue. And it can only be removed, having been elected, by two thirds of the members of the Senate. The position of the chairman of the APC is appealing with due respect, with due respect, it's appealing to sentiment and appealing to morality. I, 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 I am of the opinion, and the Constitution says so, that it is the members of the Senate that elect their leader. That is my position. Um, you know, infer from what you have said so far, with um, all of this defection and, uh, you know, with uh, in the case of um, Akpapio, you know, who was the minority leader, you know, moving to the people, um, to the uh, All Progressives Congress, you know, he resigned his position as minority leader. You know, what I don't understand is that the, the PDP, the Senate president is now with the PDP. Can, they, can he also be uh, the leader of the National Assembly when they are not in clear majority? Can the PDP be minority, can they have the position of minority leader and also that of the Senate president? Well, there are two sets of laws there, the Constitution and House rules. The decision of Senator Pabio resigning is a personal one. He elects to resign perhaps because he believes he has left the PDP for the APC. It is Sharaki's opinion that he still enjoys, from press report, that he still enjoys the confidence of majority of members of the Senate. It cannot be stampeded to resign. It can only be removed it, if he elects on his own to resign. Good enough. The Constitution has provided for how it can be removed. And it is that two thirds of members, of all the members voting, can effect its removal. I do not want to start reading the Constitution to you on here, but this is what most of us have been seeing in the media of late. Apabio's decision is very personal to him. Um. I just want us to be clear about this. Are we saying that um, the APC leader has no right to call for um, the Senate president's resignation? 
I just want you to clarify that. That it is not constitutionally right for the APC leader to call for Saraki's resignation. To the extent that there is freedom of speech, as provided for in Chapter 4 of the Constitution, anyone can call for anything. In so it is not hate speech. It is um, Mr. Damso Shiomole has the right to call for, his re for, to call for Sharaki's resignation, but he cannot compel it. It is only the members of the Senate that can get him removed in accordance with the provisions of the Constitution. Mr. Adam Soshiomole is expressing his opinion as guaranteed under the Constitution. No more, no less. Carefully to Adam Soshomoli's speech, he did make mention of um, him having national interest and saying that the Senate president does not have the national interest at heart. Now, I want to ask that with these um, defections, I mean, whose interests exactly are they fighting for? And history is repeating itself. If we haven't learned anything from 2015 to deepen our democracy, do you not think we are actually being stagnant about all this? The, the growth and development of a nation is a continuing one. The present problems or the present challenges that we are having constitute part of the learning process. We copied this our constitution, 1910 constitution, from our 1979 constitution, which in turn was a product of American and Indian constitutions. The process of learning is a continuing one. The um, process of building a nation is one that cannot be completed in a day or in, an, in I mean, in 10 years. The president, the, I mean, the chairman of APC has the right to comment, to define national interest as, 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 as he wants. But national interest must be in accordance with the law. When it is not in accordance with the law, we begin to operate in a chaotic situation. And we cannot have chaos. It, it is not, it, some people may hold the opinion that it is not even right for the national chairman of the, of the, of the, of the APC to be defining national interest to the extent that Mr. Sharaki should resign. To the best of my knowledge, Mr. Sharaki has not been convicted by any court of law. I am talking law. I'm not talking sentiment. He, the, the, the apex court in the land uh, found him not guilty in the code of conduct, in the breach of the code of conduct uh, matter. As such, there is nothing on record, there is nothing on record that says that Mr. Bukola Sharaki is unfit to hold public office. That is uh, Barrister Ali, just before we let you go and hook up with our uh, studios in um, Abuja, I just want to get um, your opinion concerning that what we should be expecting, uh, you know, in the, in the coming days, uh, with the you know uh, speculation of um, reconvening of the National Assembly. Some say Tuesday, some say Wednesday. You know, with this new development, uh, how would you see plenary in the next couple of uh, couple of days? We, we thank God that um, the courts have ruled over the years that the proper place for legislative duties, for legislative deliberations, is the legislative house. And that has been decided in quite a number of cases. So the plenary will still hold in the National Assembly complex. To that extent, I expect that all parties to this imbroglio will follow the law as it is. The siege that took place last week was one that has been roundly condemned by the 
by His Excellency, the Vice President of the Federation. One shudders as to what could have happened if a minority or a faction had been able to hold a sitting in the National Assembly on that day. Given that the next sitting may hold tomorrow or in the next few days, one expects that the law will be followed to the letters. From what one is reading in the papers, if press reports are, uh, are reliable to that extent, Mr. Bukola Sharaki enjoys the confidence of at least With um, E. Bardom, I don't know what happened there. We've been speaking with um, Barrister Remy Ali, who joined us um, from Oyo State. Uh, it's still Galaxy today. Uh, just to remind our viewers that you can be a part of this conversation uh, by sending an SMS, or you can also interact with us on our social media platforms using the hashtag Galaxy today. We'll take a quick break, and when we'll come back. We'll uh, join Abuja. Stay with us. They have 48 or so senators. We have 53 senators. So how can 48 senators preside over 53 senators? He's returning, he's returning us back to the PDP era where the PDP heard that 16 governors were more than 19 governors. That is the era Saraki is taking us to. And incidentally, he belongs to that club, and to that club he has returned. So we can see directly where he is going. We can see directly where he is going that he simply can't change his color, not at old age. So let me conclude by saying that when I say the senior president will be impeached, he will be impeached properly according to law. And the Constitution is clear how a presiding officer can be impeached. And because several impeachment has taken place, both of former senior presidents and former speakers, we are not about to witness what has never happened before. And so we have enough precedent to fall back on. I have looked at the Nigeria Constitution. It doesn't say that an impeachment once muted is by itself illegal. Until it is done, and you looked at how it is done, you can't arrive at the conclusion whether the process was lawful or unlawful. Only a hardy criminal will allege that uh, one is an arm robber, even without seeing him with a stolen good or anybody complaining that his house has been boggled by the person. So how can we be accused of planning an illegal recruit, I mean, uh, illegal uh, impeachment when the impeachment has not commenced? But if he think that by saying that he's going to preempt the all progressive Congress from having him impeach, he is deceiving himself. I think Salaki's time is over. got more votes from Kwara Central than Senator Saraki got for himself. So he can't purport or claim that the vote that we won, APC won, in the senatorial zone were because of him. They were in spite of him, which is why his living is of no political consequences as far as electoral issues are concerned. And I stand by that. We try to talk to him not out of fear. We try to talk to him out of conviction that as a presiding officer, there are rules of engagement, and we don't want him to get so emotional as to conduct himself in a manner that is offensive to those rules of engagement that presiding officers everywhere in the world. Welcome back. Uh, it's still Galaxy today. Uh, just before we move to um, Abuja, uh, Barrister Remy Ali was just rounding off his thought. Uh, so going forward now, what uh, should we be looking at at the National Assembly? What should we be doing as a legislature? I 
respect um, the members of the Senate to, as much as possible, work in tandem with the laws of the land. The, if I may use the word, vituperations of parties outside of the assembly on the propriety or otherwise of certain actions should as much as possible be disregarded so as not to eat up the polity. It is in the larger interest of Nigeria that will continue to develop this democracy to the point that the larger benefits of democracy will percolate to all Nigerians. From our end, that um, uh, Iba John, that was uh, Marista mm -hmm. Remy Ali, uh, who spoke his mind extensively concerning the development of the National Assembly. We will be going to Abuja in a couple of seconds. Uh, we have um, a legal practitioner, and of course, um, you know, uh, he's an activist as well. Uh, he's very, very, you know, very eloquent when it comes to national issues and the things of um, Nigeria. Is um, uh, Barrister Frank Kamtiti, and uh, he is standing by to talk to us, you know, about um, the major developments at the National Assembly. Uche, it has been one interesting week, you know, lots of um, dramas, um, press releases, uh, you know, and um, of course, uh, there was no scaling offense like we had them way back, um, mm -hmm. you know, some years ago. But um, in all of this, uh, do you really think um, uh, Nigeria is um, actually really ready to take? Um, you know, bring back most of those um, leaders who are actually now in the eye of the storm? Well, when you say ready, it all depends. Mm. Something Nigeria, Nigeria isn't ready for democracy. Some actually think that um, even if we're mm. going to be practicing democracy, we still are not mature enough. Mm. Something our leaders actually do not really understand. But whatever it takes, yeah. I know that by 2019, mm. um, whoever comes in, and that whatever happens, I just hope that we Nigerians will be able to vote right, knowing now all that right, well. it's all in our hands. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is, speaking of getting today. PVCs and um, you know, taking the decisions because um, it is your right to vote who you want um, to see in power for the next um, four years. All right, uh, we have a um, barrister, T.A.T. Uh, standing by right now. Good morning to you, barrister. Quickly, you know, the, the lawyer in um, um, Ibadan told us about uh, what the law says um, concerning impeachment of um, you know, the leadership of the um, National Assembly. Plus, if there's a moral right or justification you know, for Saraki you know, to resign his position as um, the Senate president, what are your thoughts exactly? Well, thank you for having me again. Um, what we witness uh, currently going on in the National Assembly, in the affairs of the Senate particularly, it's for me, having me again, for me, it's a national embarrassment. Uh, it's, it's, it's troublesome, it's worrisome, and uh, I would say that um, it's a waste of uh, precious legislative time as a result of uh, taking politics too far. All right, we will answer the question when it comes to the legality of the continued uh, uh, stay of uh, Senator Dr. Bukola Saraki as the Senate President of Nigeria. There is no doubt about that. My colleague in Abuja has said it clearly. Section 50, Section 50 of the Constitution empowers the Senate. The Senate, it doesn't talk about whether they are, they have to be two-thirds or one-third. The Senate, to, in, 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 to, to, in the, the members of the Senate to, in a sitting, in a proper sitting, to appoint the Senate president. That same section 50 also states that it will require two-third two majority to remove the Senate president. Now, whereas section 54 of the Constitution is also clear that a quorum in the Senate yeah, it, it, it's, it's made up we of uh, one third of the members. But one clear thing is this. Whereas one third can actually constitute a quorum and then a, meet, a sitting can hold, un, unless that sitting can gather up to two thirds of senators by making a resolution that the Senate President be removed, the Senate President still remains. It is highly inconsequential whether the Senate president is from a minority party. So that cannot be a ground. The cries 
from certain corners that the Senate president should be removed on grounds that he is no longer in the majority party. Those cries don't have any legal basis. They are strange to our constitution. And as a matter of fact, the, 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 the Senate president can continue. But, but there is a dangerous dimension, a very dangerous dimension to this whole thing. Section 68 of the constitution says that whenever, particularly section 68, subsection 1, paragraph G, says that whenever a, 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 a senator defects from a, a party to another party without the justification of having been a major or a division in the party, that senator stands to lose his seat. As we speak, it is, it, it, the question should be whether those senators and members of the House of Representatives who have defected are even qualified to retain their seats. And that includes Saraki himself, Akpabio, and the likes of Dino. Whether they, are, they, 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 they even have any right in law to remain as senators or representatives. That is the issue we should be dealing with. And it is at that point we can even consider whether Saraki is, a, is still a member of the, of, of, of the Nigerian Senate. Let me put it clear to you. In subsection 2, of section 68 of the constitution, it says clearly that when there is a defection based on a division in a party, the Senate or the Rep House of Representatives must be convinced that there is a division. The question I have to ask is, well, was there any time the Senate convinced itself that there was a division in the APC? Was there any time the Senate convinced itself that there is a division or not in the PDP? So what is the position of those who defected when the Senate was not yet convinced that there was a, division, a defection? That alone is the ground we should be considering whether or not Saraki should remain as the Senate president or not. Or whether Akpabio or even the rest of them who have defected recently should remain as members of the Senate or members of the House of Representatives. Those are the issues we should be grappling with at this point. All right, it's still Galaxy today. Um, let me just repeat the question I asked um, our guest in um, Abuja, uh, Barista Frank Tate. Uh, let me just um, ask again, you know, what are your thoughts specifically? There are, thought, there are talks of um, declaring the seat of um, the former minority leader of the Senate, that Gatswil Akpabio vacant. Uh, what do you think about that? It is very, 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 very easy to declare the seat of Senator Akpabio vacant. Very, very easy. In fact, there is nothing to, there is no conjecture with regard to that. But the same thing should also apply to all of those persons who have defected from, this, from, uh, from one party to the other in the Senate and the, and, and the House of Representatives. Now, here's the thing. There cannot be any evidence at this moment to show that there was division or a merger in the PDP to have warranted the defection of Senator Goswil Akpabio from the, the PDP to the APC. So automatically, as things stand now, Senator Goswil Akpabio has lost his seat. That is the position. There is no sentiment about that. And we must now also consider the propriety, the legality of the defections of Senator Dr. Bukola Saraki. Now, how, who is convinced that there has been a division in the APC? Just because Buba Galadima and, the, and other powerful figures declared that they are now members of the ROAPC, then you think that there is a division? What about if they decide to also decide to return tomorrow? And you, let me tell you, the position is clear that the evidence that is required to prove whether or not that there is a division lies in the hands of the institution of state, particularly the Independent National Electoral Commission. It is INEC that regulates the operations of parties in Nigeria. It is INEC that superintends political party operations in Nigeria. Until and when INEC is convinced, 
and believes and officially takes a position and publishes it that there is, in fact, a division in the APC. That is the only proper evidence that should be considered by the Senate or the House of Representatives. Therefore, therefore, all those defect defections we have witnessed, including that of Saraki, are illegal, and all their seats should also be declared vacant. That is the position now, or that's the position of the Constitution. Nothing more. So we shouldn't even be talking about whether Saraki should remain as Senate President, we should be considering whether they are even proper members of, uh, of the Senate, whether they are proper senators of the Federal, Federal Republic of Nigeria. That is the position of the Constitution. All right, well said, uh, you know, Barrister Tate here. Lots of um, intriguing revelations that you have, uh, you know, opened up um, this morning. You know, now, so talking about, uh, you know, reconvening uh, the National Assembly, both chambers, uh, that's the Senate and the House of Representatives, uh, what are we likely to see in the next couple of days? Because some senators, uh, some lawmakers have said that they got SMSs. Some said they heard, you know. Uh, some of them have said they've not been, um, it's not been announced by the clerks of, um, you know, both chambers, you know. Do you see uh, the reconvening um, anytime soon? And what are the procedures before they can actually reconvene? In politics, anything is possible. Forms of recklessness, desperation, and disregard for, 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 for norms, all of those things are possible in politics to the negative in, uh, impact of our country and progress. However, we must do everything possible to call ourselves to order, and especially the members who are of the National Assembly, by a strong resolve to follow law. Now, it doesn't matter. Those who have the power to, 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 to convene the Senate or the House of Representatives must do so. However and whenever they do so, it is not our problem, but they must do so. But the law must be followed. Legal, the constitutional provisions must be followed. We are following it as ordinary citizens in this country. We know what the law says, and we cannot allow, we cannot allow the exigencies of politics to ride roughshod of, of law and certainty and order. That is where we will have problems. They must, all, they must do everything possible to follow the law. And we will do also as ordinary citizens to ensure that the law is followed. Okay, that's well said. Um, I just want us to look at this, um, looking at the reconciliation um, committee that was um, headed by the national leader, Saraki himself. Would you say they fail to see all these coming? <laughs> Political desperation often blinds those who operate in the political sphere. That's what has happened. That's why Senator Goswala Kabio will make that kind of blatant mistake. That's why Senator Bukola Saraki and the rest of them, including the entire Senate, when it cannot boast of any evidence that at any point in time it resolved and agreed that there has been a division in the, in the APC. And then they also now proceeded to also went to go and, uh, I mean, to defect from APC to the PDP. They've lost their seats. They have lost their seats. The problem, the problem is who will enforce the provisions of the Constitution in the National Assembly? It is not even the President. It is not the, the DSS, that, 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 like the shameful thing that we witnessed last week. It is also the Saraki as Senate President and Dogara as the, the Speaker of the House of Representatives that are empowered by Section 68, Subsection 2 of the Constitution to ensure that these provisions are carried out. Now, the problem is Saraki, who should have convinced the entire Senate. Let me, to, let, 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 let me be clear to you. The position according to, the, to, to Section 60, 68, Subsection 2 says, a member who wants to defect shall first present evidence satisfactory to the House, satisfactory to the Senate that is concerned that any of the provisions of the subsection that is, that is 
There is a, it, it must provide evidence to the Senate, not to Saraki, not to Dugara. It must provide to the Senate and to the House of Representatives that there is a division. Was, that, was there any point in time when a, 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 any of these members, Saraki himself, was there any time he presented to the Senate that there is a division in the APC and on that basis he is defected to the PDP? Saraki himself has also lost his seat. He has lost his seat. Before we let you go, all right. Before we let you go, Barista TAT, I just want to get um, your reactions now. You know, if they do reconvene uh, um, this week, uh, what are we supposed to see as um, you know the constituents? What are we supposed to expect? You know, from the National Assembly, uh, given the fact that um, there's still a pending bill that they should attend to. You no. Know, the, the INEC and budget, uh, what will happen in the next couple of days and what are the ways forward? What are the ways forward? Well, there is a state of confusion right now. However, I can tell you that in the usual manner, of settling things against law and against the interest of the people. They will just convene and do their normal thing. Those are the, 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 that's one possibility. Another possibility is a, is a proper state of confusion where, where a, a might will become right. That is the only reason why Adam Soshomole can talk the way he's talking. He's saying that, look, when the, the import of what he, uh, Adam Soshomole is saying is that when they finish by hook or crook, in throwing Saraki away by way of one kind of impeachment, then it will be left for Saraki to go and find one way or the other to justify or to say that uh, the, his, his removal was illegal. It was illegal. Now, that is a possible confusion that we can get. And those were the, 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 the scenarios that were playing out when you saw the DSS going there. The DSS had no business. Look, the, a man like this, the, 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 the chairman of the APC can only talk the way he's say, uh, talking because... He is a political juggernaut. He has his plans. And they know how to use the, the instruments of state illegally, illegally to cause further confusion. However, it is expected that they should go there quietly and resolve all of these things. And perhaps they, they, they possi are, are possibly, uh, you know, call themselves to order and say, look, we made a mistake by defecting. We should go back because the proper, the proper foundation for defection ha 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 has not even been laid. There's a possibility like anything can happen because it's politics. John Barista Tete is an activist uh, who joined us from Abuja. We do appreciate your thoughts and your input on the show today. Uh, just before we round off, let us just take um, some of the SMS and opinions um, by our viewers on the show today. Uh, this one is from Olu Ogungbemi. Uh, so he was elected by two-thirds of members present and not two-thirds of 109. All right, your thoughts. Adams Oshimali uh, has no right to call for the impeachment of the Senate president because he is just a party chairman, not a senator. And Adams should know that Saraki uh, is the number three man in Nigeria. So Oshimali should, uh, should respect the Senate president. I don't want to use the other words that you use on air. Uh, Saraki is a real Democrat. He decided to follow part of the truth. He will remain Senate uh, president. It's not constitutionally uh, right for a minority senator or for minority senators. Okay, your train of thought. Let me just paraphrase what you wrote. Uh, it's not constitutionally right for a minority senator to preside over majority senators. Like the saying goes, the majority uh, takes uh, the vote. The law of hate speech will surely hold APC chairman by Senator Aki is not having national interest. That was from um, Enin. All right, uh, one or two more before we call it a morning. Uh, keep um, the conversations flowing on our social media platforms uh, using the hashtag uh, Galaxy today. And uh, let's see one or two more, if we can take them, okay. This one says to me, illegal impeachment of Senate President should, sh okay, okay, just try and, you know, draft your speech as well so we don't have issues on reading them. Okay, I think we should just, uh, call it a morning. Many thanks to those of you who have sent in um, SMSs and who have interacted with us on our social media platforms. Uh, we do appreciate it. We've been looking at the legality of the Senate president uh, in opposition. We had guests that uh, joined us from Ibadan and of course in uh, Abuja where we had uh, Barista 
uh, Frank Titi, an activist. And of course, from Ibadan, we had Barrister Remy Ali, a legal practitioner. We want to say thank you so much for being part of this uh, program. And of course, to those of you who sat back to watch, we'll do the same time again tomorrow. I am Uche Unyekuluje. Do have a wonderful Monday. And I'm Justin Kadonye. Many thanks for being a part of the show. We'll see you again tomorrow. Bye for now.